Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're in the middle of an amazing series, Present Truth in Deuteronomy. Amazing insights for our lives today. If you've missed anything in this series, go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. You can watch the entire series and be blessed. You can also download the same outline that we use in our study today. Our topic today, turn their hearts. I read that, I thought, Lord, turn our hearts too. It's, it's about what God wants to do for each one of us, turning our hearts toward Him. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to the team. Yes, what welcome. a great series this is. Yes. Present Truth in Deuteronomy. And great to see you again. Great to have not only our Gideon's Band in the studio, you know, reduced occupancy due to the pandemic, but we've got some joining us remotely today. And I just want to welcome Travis from Michigan. Travis, good to have you with us today. And I want to welcome Addison from British Columbia in Canada. Good to see you, Addison. Always appreciate having you on the team. And good to see Amy from Maryland. Amy, great to have you with us again. And we're just so excited to expand our team through our remote team members. We're also happy to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. You don't know how much we're blessed when you write to us at sshope at hopetv.org and share the miracles God's doing. You're like, well, it's just me, just my life. But you know, that, that is an evidence that God is working through this ministry. So thank you for writing to us. Thank you, Elizabeth, for writing to us from New Zealand. Elizabeth writes and says, my husband and I would like to just say thank you for Hope Sabbath School. Listen, we're not big media fans, but in our lockdown for COVID management, we discovered Hope Sabbath School. Amen. That's awesome. Now regularly enjoy being part of the class. Well, now this is interesting, Sabina. We rather like the smaller lockdown version. So they like having five rather than 12. Well, that's interesting. Perhaps because we get to know the members better during the time. Okay. My husband teaches a teens Sabbath school and I teach a young adult class. So it's very nice to have some time with the Hope Sabbath School team to recharge our batteries. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, yeah. thanks so much for writing. Sounds like Elizabeth and her husband are really engaged yeah. in ministry. Yes. I especially love the scripture songs provided by your wife. We appreciate also the good modeling that's demonstrated when you share leadership with other team members, mm -hmm. even though we're totally happy with you. Well, <laughs> Elizabeth, that's pretty kind of you to say. But you know, it is exciting to see team mm -hmm. members teaching because then another young adult, maybe in Nigeria, maybe in Australia, said, well, if God could, could use Jason like he did in this series, or Sabina, God, Brittany, God could use me. Not all of us will be teaching, but we, we've got tens of thousands of people downloading the outline. Uh, so, Elizabeth, thank you for your encouraging word from New Zealand. Julia writes from the country of Georgia, not the state of Georgia, but former USSR, Georgia, uh, and she's from Papua New Guinea. <laughs> you say, how did she end up in the country of Georgia? Well, she says, the church I attend, they only speak Russian, and I do not understand Russian at all. So I praise God that you are a blessing to me for my Bible study. Every Sabbath morning, I join with Hope Sabbath School before going to church. Amen? Amen. Wow, give Julia a wave there in the country of Georgia. Yeah, it's great to have this note. Thank you. Your faces burst with enthusiasm mm -hmm. in studying the Word of God. You show that you have walked with God before you share. And we say, thank you, Jesus, right? Thank you, Jesus. I particularly would like to mention Harold and Brittany. Well, they're actually with us today, Julia. Uh, they're sitting here, Harold and... And Brittany, they're actually related, you know. They just happen yep. to be sitting one in front of each other. Husband and wife, thank you for your excellent example of a husband and wife team studying the Bible. Amen? Amen. Well, that's a beautiful testimony. You're a blessing to the global community in sharing the Word of God. Your testimonies are blessing so many. Keep up the good work. 
the least I can do is pray for you to reach out to many more. Well, Julia, what you've impressed us with through your email is that even, even the way we share together here, even the way we smile, even the way we interact together is a witness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we thank you for writing to us. Well, here's one of those old fashioned notes. We still get those sometimes that are sent to us. And this one is from a donor in Texas, in the United States of America. And the donor writes and says, and we don't read the name, you know, but we do want to say thank you mm -hmm. because we're a donor supported <laughs> ministry. In fact, God may impress you today to say, I want to be a part of this miracle too. And I'll tell you how in just a moment. The donor writes, I started watching Hope Sabbath School about two years ago. I feel blessed and encouraged when I watch the program. I appreciate how you provide insight about the Word of God and give personal stories that indicate the love of God is moving in your hearts. Amen. Amen. Please accept this gift to continue the ministry of Hope Sabbath School and a donation of $100. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you, Texas. You know who you are because I just read your note. But I want to thank each one of you for partnering with us. If you'd like to learn how you can be part of this impact movement that God's using to bless more than 200 countries around the world, write to us at sshope at hopetv.org and I'd like to personally respond to you, tell you how you can partner with us or you can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hope SS. You will make a difference when you click on that donate button. You will make a difference because as a donor supported ministry, we're working together. We're volunteers, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. To see God's work be accomplished and Jesus come soon. Well, here's a note from Lazaro in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Lazaro says, Hello, brothers and sisters. Hello. Hello. It's my first time writing to you, but it doesn't mean that it's the first time for me making follow-ups of this program. No, I've been following you for about a year now, and sure, every time I see you, on the program, I don't want it to come to an end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apart from learning for myself, I also share with my family and my church members because I am a Bible teacher. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Praise God. May God of heaven keep using Hope Sabbath School and bless you beyond your expectations. Well, he lives in the southern highlands of Tanzania. Lazaro, thanks for writing to us. Every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Amen. 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 We're just so happy you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And one last note from the United States of America, from Rhode Island. That's one of the small states, right, Jason? Rhode Island here on the eastern seaboard. And Mary Lou writes and says, My husband and I watch Hope Sabbath School all the time. We enjoy it so much and receive many blessings. Love all the members and miss them when they're not there. I'm thankful for what you do. Did I say I love all the members? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Lou, thanks for writing to us from Rhode Island. And we feel like we're part of a big family, don't we? Yes. And Jesus said that's actually a sign that you're my disciples if you love one another. Amen. And right now, if God loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing love, He wants to turn hearts mm -hmm. toward Him so that they can choose life. But before we study, we have a song to sing. It's our theme song for this series from Deuteronomy 31.6, Be Strong and of Good Courage. Let's sing it together. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not, will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who
Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you so much that we can study present truth in Deuteronomy today. As we see the appeal of Moses at the end of his life, appealing to people to turn their hearts toward God, I pray the Holy Spirit would speak to hearts today across the world as we Hope Sabbath School members study, turning our hearts more fully toward you than ever before. Please bless, I pray, in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We're going to begin our study in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Brittany, would you read for us verses 22 through 26? It's a prophecy that the prophet Moses gave regarding the children of Israel after they finally settled. Now remember, they're on the borders of Canaan, right? But Moses has been told he's not going to actually go into Canaan. But he gives this prophecy under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let's read together. Deuteronomy 4, 22 to 26. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But I must die in this land. I must not cross over the Jordan. But you shall cross over and possess that good land. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you beget children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make a carved image in the form of anything, and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed. That's a sad prophecy. By the way, Moses was not allowed to enter the land. Well, what was it that he did? Do you remember, Sabina, that ca caused the Lord to say, you've spoken, we don't need to read the text, but do you remember the story? He, he did something that, uh, well, it said something about God that wasn't true. Do you remember what it was? Mm -hmm. He was told to uh, speak to the rock, rock. Brittany. Yeah, he was told to speak to the rock and water would come out, but instead he struck the rock. Twice. Yep, two times. He struck the rock at the beginning, as God <laughs> told him. Yes. But this was all a symbol of what? Who's the rock? Christ. Christ was the rock, and, and Christ would only die once. Die one time. So he would then just need to come. Doesn't the Bible say we can come boldly? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah, in the name of Jesus, we come boldly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you say, well, that wasn't very fair, but actually we'll discover in a later study that God had something really special in mind for Moses. And yeah. Moses was loved by God. But here's this warning, a prophecy of apostasy. When was that fulfilled? How quickly, does anybody know, how quickly after entering into Canaan did the children of Israel turn to foreign gods? J Harold? After the death of Joshua, because after Moses, we see that um, Joshua was, uh, took his place, but after he died, then we see this, uh, I guess, lack of leadership, and all of a sudden, tons of people is finding foreign gods from, uh, the, of the surrounding nations. Mm, you're absolutely right. Amy, I wonder if you could read for us from Judges chapter 2. You, there's, there's, there's a theme, Judges 2, 7 through 13. There's a theme in the book of Judges. Do you know what it is? And everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Their own eyes. So, yes. so that's the problem, isn't it? Instead yep. of saying, God, what do you want me to do? Uh, <coughs> wanting to do what seems right in my own eyes, and let's see where they ended up. Amy, read for us, if you would, from Judges 2, verses 7 through 13. Okay, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord died when he was 110 years old, and they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timnath Heres, in the mountains of Ephraim, in the north side of Mount Gash. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baals, and they forsook the Lord their God, the God of their fathers. 
who had brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtoreths. Now it says they didn't know the Lord. Uh, what, what does that mean, Jason? So it they means, must have known about him, right? Yeah, they definitely knew about because they still had the stories, but they didn't have the relationship. There mm. wasn't uh, emotional, spiritual knowing. They only had academic, intellectual knowledge. Mm. I'm thinking later Jesus would say, this is life eternal that they might know oh. thee. Mm -hmm. That's talking about an intimate yes. relationship, isn't it? Yes. They knew about God, but they didn't know him. And the result? Apostasy. Yep. Yeah. But let's see what else uh, Moses prophesied. John, if you could read on for us in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 27 and 28. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 27 and 28, and reading from the King James Version. It says, And the Lord th shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, and the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. And when was that fulfilled, uh, that scattering? Anybody know? Jason? Well, that was the end of the period of the kings. Uh, it happened for both Israel and Judah when uh, Assyria took away the northern kingdom, and then Babylon came and took away the southern kingdom. It, it was several hundred years, uh, but it eventually was fulfilled there. That's right. Starting in what, uh, the 8th century, yeah. uh, end of the 8th century, and then down 605, I think, Daniel, mm -hmm. and then uh, in the 500s later when they're mm -hmm. more are taken captive. So this prophecy was also fulfilled. Now, I want to ask you a question. Was it inevitable? Maybe I can ask Addison. Addison joining us from British Columbia. Was it inevitable that these prophecies would be fulfilled? Could they have repented? Or uh, did, did it have to be that way, that they would serve idols and eventually be scattered? What do you think, Addison? Well, Pastor Derek, that's such a phenomenal question. And uh, I'll say this, I believe it was a conditional prophecy. I believe that if they had um, stayed close to the Lord, as the Lord had said, He is their life, if they had clung to Him, if, if He had been their life support through thick and thin, uh, they would have been facing a, a different outcome. Can you think of a, an example of that in the Scripture? That uh, Yes, Travis, think of an example. I'm thinking the story of Jonah, you know, and he went to Nineveh. Yeah. And um, he said that the that the the city would be destroyed, and of course we know uh, from the story uh, that it wasn't destroyed. And and I forgot, and but in the book of Jeremiah it says somewhere in the book of Jeremiah that when someone makes a prophecy, if that people repents, that 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 prophecy would not be fulfilled. So I believe that the children of Israel had stayed close to God, that this would have not have happened. And and even if the children of Israel as a people had chosen to go after other gods. Finish the sentence for me. Even if as a people they chosen to go after other gods, still what? There be, still there won't be hope for those who are remnant. That's right. Yes. God. Absolutely, yeah. Sabina. There's always hope for the remnant yes. that says, we're not going to do that. Yes. An example on the plain of Dura. A whole bunch of people bow down. Now, if I understand correctly, there were many other young people taken captive besides Shadrach. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Yeah. But everybody else bowed down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we still have a choice, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Sabina. And by the way, Pastor Derek, the entire book of Deuteronomy, actually, which we already discussed how it's, you know, uh, reinforcing of the law, what would be the point of reinforcing and giving so much warning if they had no choice? Yeah. What would be the point of insisting with them to choose life if they could not repent and could not turn away in the future from potential harm? Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely think that they could have done much better. Yeah. All right. No. Yes, John. You know, uh, it reminds me also of uh, the story of Belshazzar. His mm -hmm. grandfather, of course, he uh, mm. uh, he followed other gods, but he repented. But Nebuchadnezzar, the, right? Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. But Belshazzar, although he knew what God had done to his grandfather, he did not obey uh, the God that he worshipped. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting to see that same pattern. 
And by the way, when Daniel kind of rebukes him there in Daniel 5, he says, and you knew all these things, mm -hmm. yeah. O king. Right, Jason? And building off that idea, there's a distinction between nations and individuals. And right. so, well, what was going to happen with Babylon? We knew that the head of gold, it was going to end. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be with Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that would be true for today, wouldn't it, folks? That I, just because I'm part of the church, I've still got a choice, an individual mm -hmm. choice to make, right? Yes. And if a church that I'm a part of, some people have written to me and said, Pastor, I feel like my church has gone away from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that that church member has to also go away from the Bible? No. Not at all. Well, that's what the Reformation was all about, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Was trying to protest going away from the Bible, yes. bring people back to the Word of God. Well, we want to go on with this prophecy because the good news is that even the prophecy about apostasy, idolatry, captivity is not without hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Harold, can you read for us, please, Deuteronomy 4 and verse 29? Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It reads, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find Him, if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. From there. Where's the there again? Captivity. From captivity. captivity. That's right, John. Yeah. From your place where you've ended up because of your failures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you will... Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord how? With all, With all your heart. heart. With all your heart. Does, does that remind you of another verse in the yep. Bible? Anybody? Yeah. It, it, it's actually a contemporary yeah. prophet during the captivity. Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. was that that spoke about with all your heart. You remember that? Jeremiah. Jeremiah, Jeremiah that's mm -hmm. right. John, could you read that for us? In sure. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. So that makes me wonder, do you think Jeremiah was aware of the prophecy of Moses? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit says, don't forget what <laughs> I said through the prophet Moses, right? Mm -hmm. How does uh, Jeremiah Repeat that concept, John, in Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 14. I'm reading from the King James Version, and it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, said the Lord. I, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, said the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Mm. So Travis, I have a question for you. Why is it important to seek the Lord with all our heart. Is, is God trying to hide from us? I mean, in the Garden of Eden, it's God who's looking for the, the sinful pair, right? The ones who've just made a poor choice. Well, why do we have to seek God with all of our heart? Well, Derek, I'm thinking of a Bible verse, I think in the book of Matthew, where it says, no one having um, set their hand to the plow and looking back, uh, has eternal life. I think of another, I think it's in Mark, uh, when it's talking about the end of time, you know, and the things going on, it says, remember Lot's wife. So there's no middle ground. Mm. We can't have served two masters. We, uh, the Bible says we'll love one and hate the other. And so when we turn with God to all our heart, it's then that he can work in us and through us to change us, to be a blessing to others. Um, but there is no middle ground. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about that, and I'll come to your point, Addison. It's true with love. I mean, yeah. you know, if I said to my wife, I'll love you on Mondays and Thursdays, <laughs> mm -hmm. what would you say? <laughs> no. That's, that can't be true love, right? You can't no, just can't. love on Mondays and Thursdays. No. Uh, if you're going to love with all your heart, it will, it will be a total commitment. Yeah. Not that God is requiring that in order to accept us. He's seeking for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. It's like Travis said, there really is no other way, is there? Addison, you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I thought of the one word that, when, when I think about this subject, I think of the word impartiality. Uh, the only way to have a, 
uh, a relationship with God, a constant relationship, is to go into it uh, without a divided heart, to say, Lord, I'm completely yours, surrendering to you each and every day, no impartiality, I am all yours. So let's think about that in terms of the context. It's a time of failure. Mm -hmm. But the prophecy is, in this time of failure, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. Mm -hmm. P.S. I'm not trying to hide from you, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but you seek me with all of your heart. Can you think of a Bible character who experienced, and there's probably many of them, yeah. Yeah. terrible failure, but rather than choosing to give up and be eternally lost, mm -hmm. he or she said, I'm going to seek the Lord with all my heart. Amy, can you think of someone that comes to your mind mm -hmm. said, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to, yeah, despair. I'm going to seek God with all my heart. Who comes to your mind? I think David comes to my mind first. Yeah. You know, after his terrible sin and fall with Bathsheba, he, he, you know, one of the famous quotes in the Bible, maybe, or one of the songs that's made from a Bible verse is creating me a clean heart. Wow. You know, it's this whole idea of mm. seeking God with his whole heart and recognizing that God is the one who can change the heart too. I can imagine that's a great illustration, Amy. I can imagine if King David was listening, he'd say, Amy, it wasn't just that adulterous affair with Bathsheba, but I also... Uh, I also killed her husband, who was more honorable in his conduct than I was, and uh, I brought shame to to the name of God. Mm -hmm. But 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 you're absolutely right, Amy. He he said, "I'm going to seek God." Created me a clean heart. I'm going to seek God with my whole heart, and mm -hmm. and he found forgiveness. Right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Brittany, can you think of another story? I think of Peter, the disciple mm -hmm. of Christ, mm -hmm. and how. Um, Jesus had warned him that you will deny me um, before the rooster crows, and Peter did. Um, and afterwards, he, he was very sorrowful. He repented, and Jesus, when he rose from the dead, came and had a conversation with him where he restored him, not just to this loving, loving relationship with himself, but he restored him to go and serve and bring others to him. Um, and mm -hmm. it's beautiful to see he asks him three times, do you love me? And Peter responds, you know I love you, Lord, you know all things. Um, and so we see that even someone who was walking with Jesus for three and a half years committed a, a great failure, but God restored him and gave him a mission to go and find others who had f maybe made the same mistake, mm. that they could come back to the Savior as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that story of Peter, Simon Peter, paralleled with Judas, you know, both denied Jesus and mm -hmm. one opted for despair. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And the other one opted to seek the Lord with his whole heart. Yes. 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 And, and, and as has been mentioned in a previous study, God not only, Jesus not only forgave him, but he gave him an important mission. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, that's the grace of God, isn't it? Yes. So when we read this prophecy of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 4, mm -hmm. it, it really is a prophecy of hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I want to give a testimony. People write and say, I appreciate how people are willing to share. Can you think of a time, a time <coughs> when you experienced failure, but you said, I'm going to choose not to give up in despair, but seek God with my whole heart. Now, because some people may be watching and say, well, the Hope Sabbath School members are all perfect. And they don't understand how I feel. They don't understand. I've, I've experienced failures in my life, uh, but, but God shown mercy to me. Jason, uh, people would probably say, Jason has never had a problem in his life, but we're all on the planet, right? Yeah. We're all sinners in need of grace. Can you think of a time of failure when instead of giving up, which by the way, who tempts us to give up? Satan. Satan. The enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Curse God and die, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but instead you said, no, I'm going to seek God with all my heart. Yeah, so during the time when I was in high school, I was at a high school that had a lot of spiritual emphasis and really helped me grow spiritually. But then during the summers, I would leave school and I'd be back home. And I mean, home is a good place, but also I'm with friends and others who, uh, who could guide me in other different directions. I remember there was one summer particularly 
where being separated from the spiritual connection I had at the school was really hitting me hard. And so I was, I was feeling that and I was wanting to replace it with whatever I could. And so that summer I really uh, got into watching all these kinds of movies and TV media. There were a lot of things that were not godly and I was, I was just desperate for something. And so I was just spending my time absorbed in all this media that was not good for me. And there was about a two week period that was really dark during my life during the time. And I felt like darkness, but I felt kind of trapped. I was like, I know this is bad. I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm just desperate. And so I was just in this dark period. And then after about two weeks there, I finally was like, Lord, I can't stand this anymore. Lord, I'm just, I gotta give myself back to you. And I really just kind of, I think I would like open my Bible. I just started praying. I was like, Lord, please get me out of this situation. And thankfully I was able to go on a little bit of a trip and move out of that situation. And then a couple weeks later, I was back at school. I was in my spiritual atmosphere and I was able to talk with others who were able to encourage and strengthen me. And that really kind of helped restore me. That time was dark, it was difficult, but I realized that by having the Word of God and being able to surround myself with others who could give me spiritual encouragement, mm. particularly at a time that I really needed it, that got me through that dark time. Mm. You know, I learned something here. Maybe someone on the team, you want to react, but it sounded like environment was an important factor, mm -hmm. either negatively mm -hmm. <laughs> or positively. Amy, I see you nodding. Uh, why is environment so important? You say, well, I'm free, I can choose whatever. Why does environment affect people so much? That's a really good question. And I think that there's a number of reasons, but you know, a lot of times the world looks a little bit better than following God. And I know as a parent of um, young people, <laughs> teenagers, and now getting into their 20s, um, you know, a lot of times our church and, and God's word looks more like a, a list of do's and don'ts rather than a welcoming and inviting place to be. Um, and so I think that the world really does have a draw, especially on our young people, but any of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, it's Satan. He's just, he's good at what he does, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I can remember, this is my personal testimony, I can remember in public high school, I did live in a Christian family, but when I was with my non-Christian friends, I would act a certain way. Mm -hmm. I would talk differently. Uh, and, and the environment, that would mean I ought to choose my environment carefully, right, Harold? Yes. Mm -hmm. Travis, I see you responding uh, to that concept of choosing your environment carefully. Well, Derek, it, I, it wasn't an environment I guess I chose. Um, I come from a broken family, and at 15, I, uh, I had went and lived uh, with somebody who uh, who lived obviously contrary to the will of God, and so I, I had never sworn or done any, anything like that before, and I and so I kind of from 15 on into my 20s and 30s, I grew up into this environment, and I began cursing, and I began swear, you know, um, drinking and smoking and chewing tobacco and living an adulterous lifestyle i mean just i mean really bad and uh so now here i'm just thinking of peter's was just mentioned i'm thinking coming out of that satan reminds us constantly of our failures in our past and uh it's it means so much more you know john three sixteen means so much more to me now mm -hmm. because i have to believe that jesus forgives me i have to believe that jesus can change the ways um and, but the surroundings in which the environments in which we're in has a profound impact on our lives. It completely changed the person I am. And praise God, I am being changed again into a new person um, because I have a life with Jesus. And, and maybe a tribute, uh, Travis. There, there was, a, there was a, a, a gentleman that God used, the godly man that God used to, to, to help, help turn your heart. We're going to talk about turning hearts. Um, what, what was his name and, and, and how did he help you to seek the Lord with all your heart? Well, Derek, there was actually several people along the way. Um, so I, I don't want to give credit to one particular person, but the very first person was a man by the name of Randy who was in the mountains of Wyoming. He was <laughs> leaned back and kicked up on a chair at a cabin in the mountains. He started talking to me about God. And that was my first introduction. But there's been many 
people along the way. God has put people in to start steering me and leading me back. Amen. That's a beautiful story. And that's an interesting thought that God uses a variety of people. And God, God not only uh, accepted you when you sought him with your whole heart, but he put you onto the Hope Sabbath School team. Travis, great Amen. to have you here. Amen. We want to go on to the next verse. Um, and Sabina, if you could read for us Deuteronomy 4 and verse 30. There's so much in these few verses, right? Mm -hmm. Present truth for our lives today. Because it speaks ab about... Uh, turning to the Lord. Could you read for us Deuteronomy 4 verse 30? Yes, I'll be reading from the New King James Version and it says, When you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn to the Lord your God and obey His voice... And you're going to stop there because we're going to read verse 31 in a minute to see what God will do. Mm -hmm. But let's explore that, that uh, phrase, turn to the Lord. Brittany, is, is that talking about, oh, the Lord's there, and so I'm turning my body? What does it mean to turn to the Lord? Well, I think of the word repentance. Repentance means turn towards God or turn away from sin. Um, and so we all have choices. We talked about this in our last lesson, choose life or choose death. Um, God is giving us a choice. He's right there waiting. He's right next to us and He never leaves us nor forsakes us, but He doesn't force us. Mm -hmm. So when, we, when it says turn, um, it's, it's giving us the opportunity to choose. Am I going to mm -hmm. choose to follow God, okay. or am I going to choose to go my own way? Mm -hmm. All right, Addison, want to add to that. What does it mean uh, to turn to the Lord? Well, can I use an analogy? I, I thought of uh, being on a road, you know, you're driving yeah. uh, down a long, maybe interstate, and you see all these signs that are telling you not to go that way. It's like a road to destruction. And finally, you, you, you see the signs, you believe the signs, and um, you see what's, what's, what's good in the opposite direction, and you make a U-turn. You make a complete uh, 360, maybe, uh, and, and go, or I should say 180, and you go the other way. Sure. And, I, uh, you serve I can the Lord. remember one time uh, on a divided highway, and someone got on and they were driving on the wrong side of the highway towards the, mm -hmm. the rest of us mm -hmm. and everybody's going honk 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 mm -hmm. to train flashing their lights mm -hmm. because if that person doesn't make a u-turn mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. they're going to have a head-on collision yes right yeah. Yeah. so great illustration addison travis well, just building off of what Addison said, the implication in the verse, turn to the Lord, is that your back is to the Lord. Mm. So by implication, mm. it's saying that your back is to the Lord, and that's not, that's not a good place, right? We need to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And, and, and so maybe the turning is from looking down or even looking at myself, my sin, or my pleasures or whatever, and, and turning mm -hmm. you know, towards the Lord, focusing on Him, um, making that choice. That idea of the U-turn, though, I like that. Thank you, Addison, that U-turn. Uh, I may actually have to leave some things behind mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. some intended destinations mm -hmm. to use the image, right? I'm heading on. A, uh, what are some things I might have to leave behind uh, when I say I'm going to turn to the Lord and seek Him with my whole heart? Mm -hmm. Sabina? I think that the first thing we need to leave behind is our own selfish desires, you know, mm -hmm. our own uh, ideas of what life is about and even about what, who God is. And so letting the self go and letting God then direct our lives, for me, it's one of the main steps. So letting go of our selfish desires. Now, doesn't it say somewhere in the Bible, um, trust in the Lord yeah. with, all your with all your heart, right? But I'm thinking of another one where He will give you the desire of your heart. So desires of our heart are not bad mm -hmm. as long as our heart is, someone finish the sentence, with God. turn toward yeah. God, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Then I'm saying, oh God, I'm looking for a companion yes. who will love me and love you. Yes. That's a good desire, right? Yeah. Yeah. When my heart is turned to God, it brings that into alignment. Jason? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may need to turn away from people. They could be friends, they could be family. They could be even uh, supervisors at work uh, or even teachers, anyone who might have an influence on us that isn't leading us towards God. You talked in a previous, in your testimony about turn, turning away from certain forms of media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? There may be some things I need to leave behind 
Yes, Addison. Yeah, so I was thinking about this and I think it even applies to uh, our future plans and, and, and wondering is like, Lord, what would you have me to do? What What's your plan? I still am sort of yeah. uh, wrestling with some of those questions. And, uh, but yet I'm constantly reminded and I praise God for this verse. He brings it to my mind all the time. It's Matthew 6, 33, where he says, seek first, not seek second, not seek third, but <laughs> seek first, make God your first priority. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All these other things shall be added unto you. So uh, with future endeavors, um, with the desires of your heart, uh, I mean, God is so good. And I pray that he will give me the, the strength that, and the faith to continue to move forward by his grace. Amen. And we're praying for you, Addison, because these are important times as we think about what we're going to do with our lives. Yeah. Lord, what I love the prayer of uh, Saul of Tarsus. He's about to be changed to Paul the Apostle. Mm -hmm. He prays a simple prayer. Lord. What do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, that, that is just, that's just so simple. I can remember that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lord, what do you want me to do? Amy, yeah. uh, what are some things you were thinking about we may have to turn away from, or what were you thinking as we talk about these choices we're making? Yeah, I was just going to second what Addison said. You know, sometimes our future plans. I remember I was studying with a young lady in Asia, and she was on a fast track to a high-paying career, um, you know, and ha was building up a really good reputation, <laughs> popularity within her business. And um, she felt like God was calling her away from that. And even, you know, she had a picture of what her husband was going to look like and who he was, even though she didn't have a man in her life. You know, she just had this picture and she felt mm -hmm. like she was having to give that up. And it was a struggle, you know, sometimes yeah. turning to God and leaving some of these things behind us. You know, I, I think mm -hmm. of Lot's wife. She turned around and looked because she was leaving something that was important to her. Um, and it can it can be a challenge. And I think that this is where community is really important. Mm -hmm. But as we're turning away and as, as we have friends and colleagues and family and disciples who are turning away from God, they need help and encouragement and support as they're turning away from whatever it is that God is calling them away from. It may not always be easy, right? Mm -hmm. It may not always be easy. Sabina, I'm going to ask you to continue reading. Mm -hmm. you, you, you were ready to read verse 31, I know. Uh, but, but if we turn to the Lord, there's the prophet's writing. Moses is writing. This is his heartfelt appeal mm -hmm. to his people. Yeah. What does he tell us in the next verse in Deuteronomy 4, verse 31? Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, For the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swore to them. So what's the word of hope? Mm -hmm. He will not yeah. leave or forsake us. Right. If mm -hmm. we turn to him, yeah. and we've used the wording with all our hearts, yes. he's not hiding, he's not pushing us away, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's ready there to welcome us. There's a, another verse that reinforces that in the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55. Travis, I think if you could find that for us, we, we actually sang this um, in one of our series on, on Isaiah the Gospel Prophet. I think it was our scripture song, Isaiah 55, uh, verses 6 and 7. Verses 6 and 7. How does that read in your Bible? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful picture. That yes. reminds me of a uh, New Testament, a, a Jesus story. Yeah. What's the story that comes to your mind when you hear that picture of uh, he will abundantly pardon? Well, the woman who was, was caught in adultery mm. and uh, she was about to be stoned. And then we see Jesus showing abundant mercy mm. because he knew what was the intention of the other people. Yeah, and I was so, thinking of another one too, Jason. The prodigal son. Right. How mm -hmm. does the father uh, respond to this wayward son mm. who's clearly been in a place of failure, mm -hmm. right? How does he respond to him uh, as recorded in Luke 15, Jason? 
Sure. You don't need to read it. Just All right, tell me so the I'll story. share the story. Yes. Yeah, so he he has his well. He's he's sitting there. He's waiting to see when his son will come. And when he sees him afar off, he literally runs out to him, even though he's this high official and he doesn't care about any of his customs or anything. And then he's crying <laughs> and he hugs him. It's a very emotionally intense experience of love mm -hmm. and receiving him back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, we're going to go on and talk about when we turn, it, there'll be changes in our behavior. What changes, let's take the prodigal son as an example, what changes has that son already made before he gets embraced by his father? There's several key changes, John. You know, he left his friends that influenced him badly and he turned towards his father. He changed his environment, right? Mm -hmm. I'm leaving the pig pen. What else? Mm -hmm. Did he, what other turn did he have to make? Uh, well, I, I feel like that he was turning also in honoring his father because mm. he had left his family, left his father as if he had died, as if the father had passed away. And now he was honoring his father according to God's command. So Beautiful. It, he, to his father, the, he basically said, I wish you were dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now he's saying, I know my father yes. is a man of love mm -hmm. and honor and integrity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and throw myself on his mercy, basically. Right, mm -hmm. Jason? He made the decision to go home, to come back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just leave the pig pen, mm -hmm. but come back home. Well, let's look at the prophet John the Baptist. Uh, John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 he also speaks about the fact, and Jason, maybe you could read that for us, the first eight verses of Matthew 3, that repentance will involve some changes in behavior. But please hear what we're saying. That is not to earn the love mm -hmm. of God. Mm. He already loves us. Amen. It's to get those things out of the way yes. that are hindering yes. a life-changing relationship yes. with Him. Matthew 3, Jason, verses 1 through 8. I have the New King James Version here. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Now in Luke's gospel, and Amy, maybe you could read it for us in Luke chapter 3, uh, John the Baptist gets very specific. You know how the synoptic gospels complement each other. And uh, Luke, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, records some very specific words that this uh, U-turn, to use Addison's uh, mm -hmm. analogy, they're making a U-turn and saying, I'm heading on the road to destruction. Everyone's honking. Um, people of God are flashing their headlights and saying, wrong way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, are, what are some specifics, Amy, that uh, John the Baptist talks about in Luke 3, verses 10 to 14? And this is from the King, New King James Version. So the people asked him, saying, what shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Then the tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. What do they all have in common? If you're listening to some of those things. What, what do they all have in common? Anybody? Yes, Sabina? It looks like they are curious to know what they should be doing. So they are asking questions. Oh, okay, questions. the people. Yep, the people. thank you. My, yeah. my words weren't clear. But yeah. the people, yeah. 
all in common and say that they've got to be some changes, right? Yeah. Um, thank you. Now let me ask the question again. So what do the things that John asked them to do all have? What, what do they all have in common? Yes, Brittany. It's all about how they treat their neighbor. Mm. Okay. And, and Jesus talks about, you know, loving him first and loving our neighbor as uh, we love ourselves. So it's all how they treat each other that would reveal if they have the love of God in their hearts. It, it's a shift, isn't it, from you being the center of the world, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To thinking about how to care for other people. And that is a, an evidence yeah. of what? Not just that you're trying to be a nicer person. Love. What? Love. That the love of God is in your heart, mm -hmm. right? That you've connected with the God of heaven who loves you and also loves mm -hmm. everyone around you. And so you're treating them differently, whether mm -hmm. you're a soldier mm -hmm. or a tax collector, or whatever your occupation might be. It's affecting the way that you relate to those around you. Yeah. Now, one other change that happens in this U-turn is found in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And many people... Uh, maybe people without a Christian background, they say, you know, I've heard about Christian baptism. What, what does that mean? What's the significance of that? Well, it's part of this turning of our hearts, isn't it? Yeah. It's part of this turning away from the things that are destroying us toward God. Brittany, yeah. would you read for us in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38? Um, let's see what it says. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I have a question for you, John. Does the water of baptism actually wash away sin? No. So you're telling me an unrepentant sinner could say, well, everybody's getting baptized. I'm going to go be baptized. That, that he or she would go into the water, come out just a wet, unrepentant sinner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then what is the significance of baptism? Apparently it was an important invitation on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. I think baptism is a, is a symbol of what the Holy Spirit has already done within the heart of a person. Mm -hmm. All right. See, the fact that you've chosen to surrender your life wholly to Jesus, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ask Him to forgive your sins. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're saying that's just a visual representation mm -hmm. of what He's already done? Yes. Yeah. Sabina, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? Yeah, I think of the, you know, when you see a person being baptized, that you turn the person down, you know, on the back. And then when they come back, it's like if you die with Christ and then you are raised again. That's what the Word of God says, that when we are buried with Christ, then we are raising up. And the baptism is just, you know, a public confession of this dying to our own desires, uh, as you were saying, the selfish ones, the ones that are not allowed with God, aligned with God's will, and surrendering to His will in our lives. And rising up in a new life in Christ, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You're quoting there from Romans chapter 6. I, I remember I had the privilege of participating in a baptism one time, and the, the person said, hold me under for a long time. There's a lot of sins that need to be washed away. Well, it's just the symbol, but it is not insignificant. Yeah. It's saying, somebody said publicly, I think, mm -hmm. Sabina, right? Mm -hmm. It's a public confession that I have what? Turned to Christ. Yes. I've turned. Yeah, yeah I've turned to, to God. I've turned to Jesus as my Savior. Yes. And I'm not ashamed mm -hmm. to make that confession. Mm -hmm. yes. It's a beautiful passage here in Deuteronomy. Even though prophecy of apostasy, idolatry, uh, failure, yeah. that we don't have to stay there, right? Mm -hmm. not at all. We can choose to turn to the Lord knowing He'll welcome us back. Sabina? Yes. Now, I'm just thinking that, Pastor Derek, you know, we've been talking even in previous classes about the importance of choosing well, to choose mm -hmm. life. And that's it. You know, it's just about choosing life. It's not something about just what we are letting go. It's also what we are choosing for the future. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the don'ts, but about the do's and what God has for you in, in your future. So let's imagine we have a friend, like in the place that Jason was in some years mm -hmm. ago, he was in high school, 
so a teenager, who, who says, Amy, I know I should turn away from those things because they're leading me away from God, but I just don't feel like it. Mm. What would you say to her? What would you mm. say to him? They're being mm. honest, right? Yeah. I know I should turn away. Those, those things are deadening my spiritual sensitivity, but I just don't feel like turning away from those things. What would you say? That's kind of a hard an uh, question to answer, but I think we all know that it's the Holy Spirit that leads us to repentance. And so my encouragement to them would be, you know, the Holy Spirit is working in your life. You're not wanting to repent of your own. This is something that the Holy Spirit is doing in you. And trust the Holy Spirit. Lean into Him. Trust God. Um, and, you know, surround yourself with a community of, of believers who can help support you through this. Mm -hmm. could, Don't be afraid. Okay. Could I, could I pray to God to, to ask, help me to hate the things that I love, that are, that are opposed to Him? Would that be an appropriate prayer? What do you think, John? There's a promise in Acts chapter 5 and verse 31, which says, Him had, talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. Him had God exalted with His right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So you would tell your friend, it's okay if you don't feel like it, mm -hmm. ask God to give you mm -hmm. a spirit of repentance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe someone's watching today and you're saying, Pastor Derek, that's me. You know, I, I've got these things that are dragging me away from God that will lead me to destruction, but, but I don't feel like I can be free from them. Mm -hmm. The Word of God saying that God gives us the gift of repentance. We can also choose to change our environment. We've learned that. We can choose to turn, even though we're weak, and see a loving God running to meet us, yes. who loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing love. My friend, if that's yeah. you, I want to appeal to you to turn to the Lord with all your heart. If you know someone, you love someone who needs to turn, you pray for her, you pray for him, because our God is a miracle working God. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, turn their hearts. What a theme. We thank you that you are ready and longing to welcome us with acceptance, forgiveness, salvation, grace, and joy. I pray for those making that turn today, and I pray we would reflect the love of God to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, you were listening today and you said, that's me or someone I know. Don't keep that good news to yourself. God loves with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Go out and share that good news with those around you.